could we go back, and I raised this point early on, um, uh, you know, one of the reasons those 1,600 patients got excluded was they didn't have an adequate biopsy sample for testing. Mm -hmm. And the, the eligibility criteria for these immunotherapy trials has been pdl one positivity on a core biopsy. Um, thoughts about that? Uh, you know, because we, we've talked about it in our weekly tumor boards about, you know, is EBUS okay? Can you do PDL1 staining on on a on a robust FNA? I don't I don't I don't I'm not aware of any presented or published data yet. But thoughts about that? I mean, I think we need to consider what to secure within the broader context of what else you want to test, and including PDL1 um, apart from molecular testing. I think what I try to recommend to people asking the community is not just to get an FNA, but to try to at least get something like two cores, if it's safe and feasible. Yeah. And that way you might have enough material to do everything that you want to do. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think the, 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 the paradigm in our interventional radiologists are very good at this. They'll get as many cores as they can and also get FNAs as long as the safety is there. But that provides you know, a lot of material for testing and allows us to do the PDL one testing. However, you know, Main Street USA. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're kind of tuned into this. Right. Um, well, and even I think in academia, right? Uh, some lung cancer presents more centrally. Yeah. We have a real pneumothorax rate when we biopsy the lung by a CT guided route. And even in academia, we tend to have more widespread availability of interventional pulmonology who's going to be comfortable getting more robust samples through a bronchoscope. And I think there's sometimes a pressure in, acad in academic practice to minimize that pneumothorax risk. Uh, and get an FNA. Um, Dara Eisner and others have data showing that you can get full molecular characterization off an ample FNA. Oh, I, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't, I mean, sorry, I don't disagree with that. The issue I'm talking about is PDL1 testing. Right. And PDL1 so, testing can be done as well from FNAs as long as they're rich in cellularity. Absolutely. So you have to keep in mind how this assay is done, right? There are four different assays, more than four now, by four different companies scored in different ways, right? The one that counts for clinically considering if you have 50% is 22C3. Mm -hmm. And that is scored only on tumor cells and without reference to staining intensity. And so while there's no actual data to back up what I'm saying, from a common sense standpoint, you can count cells on an FNA. It never stopped you before. Never. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK. Um, yeah, but, but I, I think this whole PDL1 t testing, you know, we, 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 we do need standardization. I think we're moving there. Um, it's not. Uh, um, acceptable, in my opinion, to have multiple tests that are out there. We need to arrive at one single platform, and then obviously efforts are underway uh, to, to do that. Well, let me ask a question. Is it worth rebiopsying just to get PDL1? You have the plasma option for molecular, and we even do this fancy thing where we can do molecular off the FNA rinse, but that we won't do PDL1 staining on. We'll do that off a of good FNA, but not the rinse, but we can do our, our next gen sequencing off that. Is it worth rebiopsying for PDL1? And what dis disturbs me about this impressive um, data of first line pembrolizumab is why were these patients not salvageable in the second line? Why was there such yeah, a dramatic yeah. survival advantage? It right. clearly seems to matter that these patients are treated with immunotherapy first. Yeah, that's that that was that was the surprising and yet concerning thing to me because, you know, in the going back to our beginning EGFR mutations, I'm not convinced that whether a, a patient gets uh, a TKI first or second line, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is that you can't risk giving it second because they might not get it. Um, well, if you um, go that's back the issue. to Panosphidias, uh, what is that, 10, 15-year-old data on immediate docetaxel versus yes. at progression, 40% of the patients in the control arm never got were it. never got it. They yeah. Either their PFS event was death or they were too sick yeah. for But that for doesn't second. happen with TKIs. You can always throw that in there. It doesn't happen as often. That's, that's a it, fair argument, right? That with TKIs and perhaps as well with immunotherapy, that they're gentler therapies, you'd give it to a patient. But they weren't salvageable. Lower. Why weren't the immunotherapy patients salvageable? Yeah, but don't, don't, don't assume the TKI. Remember on, on your TAC, on right. the chemo arm, only 81% of right. no, people got a TKI. So I, I, I don't think, because, you know, stuff happens. 